Hello everyone, welcome back to Techie Pocket, and this is the $205 PC that I built using the H55 platform. Now most of the parts here, although they're using the older platform to keep it cheap, they are basically brand new because a lot of these parts I got from Chinese manufacturers that still produce for this old platform. And let me just tell you, although this platform is old, it's still very relevant and that's why I'm using it. So let me go ahead and get into the price breakdown so uh, you guys can see how much I paid for everything. Okay, so first off, I paid $10 for a Windows 10 Home key. Uh, you can pretty much get any key for Windows 10, whether it's Pro, Home, or I don't know what else they make. You can pretty much get all of them off eBay for under $20. Next, I got a two heat pipe brand new cooler from China for $20. I'm not really sure how well this works, and I don't know if it has RGB. It appears to have RGB, but I don't think you can change it. It seems to be just staying green the whole time. And it's, it's a pretty good cooler for the price as long as you're not overclocking. It's pretty silent, but if you're going to overclock, I would recommend you get something like the uh, Arctic Freezer 33 Esports 1 cooler. I highly recommend this one. It's $30. It's a way better looking cooler. It's not, uh, and it doesn't have any LEDs or anything but it performs way better. For the graphics card, I chose the GTX 750 Ti. And the reason why I chose this is because it's pretty much the cheapest card you can get that'll still play Fortnite and PUBG fairly well at 1080p with a mix of medium to low settings. And you can also get it under $80. Now, the reason why I chose the 750 Ti over something like the uh, newer cards, like a 1050 or a... Uh, I forgot what the GT1030, I think that's what it's called. The reason why I chose 750 Ti over those cards is simply because of price. Right now, the uh, newer cards are still uh, pretty overpriced. And although they're coming way down now that RTX is coming out, they're still not as low as I would have wanted them. And 750 Ti's you can get for pretty cheap. I got mine for $75.00. You can get them for like $50 if you're really looking. Moving on to after that, Acebel, I think that's how you say it. It's a A-C-B-E-L, Acebel. It's a 400 watt power supply that works fairly well. I got that for $12, which is a very good price. Used, of course, but it still works really good. The mouse was just a standard mouse from this company called Seawit for $10. I also got 4 gigabytes of DDR3 for $12, which is fairly good for uh, DDR3 nowadays. Next up, I paid $25 to get the Rosewill FBM01 uh, case. It's a fairly decent case. Uh, it's, it, it looks like it allows for cable management in the back, but really it's like they only give you like a millimeter of space, which no cable will fit back there, so basically it's like an older case where you don't have a back side for the cable, so there's no window, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, for $25, I would have at least expected to have the uh, cable management area. Next, I paid $20 to get two 160GB hard drives. I'll, although I'm only putting one in this computer, uh, that's pretty good value for a 160GB hard drive. That'll hold basically your Fortnite and PUBG and Windows fairly well, as long as you're not playing any other games, that should be good enough. After that, I paid $25 for four Xeon X3430 processors. These processors handle games very well, and uh, as long as you pair them with a uh, card that's not more than a 1050 Ti, it's pretty much not going to bottleneck it. And the CPU is four cores, which means you're also not going to have any compatibility issues. And it's fairly fast for doing a little bit of uh, I guess you could say multitasking. Now as for the keyboard, I kind of cheaped out on this one because it's, I'm trying to make a full setup here. I paid $12 and got a nice PS2 keyboard. It's fairly clicky, feels pretty good, not as good as the mechanical though, but it, for $12 I would say that was a pretty good keyboard. Finally, the motherboard was a brand new P55A motherboard for $50. Five, no, for $50. Now this is a from a Chinese manufacturer that produces these motherboards brand new for this old platform. And let me tell you, it has no name because this is the most generic box I've ever seen. 
just says motherboard everywhere, so I'll just have it linked down below where I bought it from, but the motherboard seems to be fairly feature-packed, if that's how you'd say it. There doesn't seem to be any overclocking. Uh, I don't know how well the VRMs or anything would be, but if you're just running it at stock like I am, then it's perfectly good. Okay, so now that we got the price breakdown, now let's go ahead and build this computer. Alright, so there we go. So this is the PC I built for $205. I, it would be able to play PUBG and Fortnite at 1080p 60fps with a mix of medium to low settings. Fairly good. And I'd say this PC has a lot of value. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for what you want me to build next, go ahead and tell me down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Listen.